Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to the third session of the Art Lounge Talks. My name is Shanzi Sabzbari and I'm an artist and an art writer. Um, today we have with us Ahmad Nia, um, who is an investor, a consultant, an entrepreneur, and he's also the founder of uh, the Dastan Goi Art Residency, which just took place in Islamabad uh, a week ago, uh, and they recently had their uh, exhibition. Um, so we're going to be speaking to him today. I will just add him to this live session. I'm adding him right now. Hi, Ahmad. Salam alaikum. How are you? Salam alaikum. How are you doing? I am great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Apologies for making you delay this talk. Um, but excited to be here with you. Good to have you here. Let me just introduce you first, and then we'll start with the questions. Is that cool? Sounds good. Okay. So, uh, Ahmad Nia is a brand, e-commerce, and customer acquisition strategy consultant uh, with 10 plus years of professional experience with the world's top brands, such as Apple, Mercedes-Benz, Coca-Cola, and Nestle, to name a few. He connects brands with his curated global network of creatives. Um, Dastan Goi is his latest initiative, which he began with his wife, Walia, in 2020. Uh, this began as an Instagram account and website, which garnered instant attention due to its carefully curated content and live sessions uh, with well-known creatives from Pakistan. Most recently, in October 2021, he launched the Dastan Goi Artist Residency on, his, in, on the outskirts of Islamabad, Pakistan, and will soon be launching the Dastan Goi Art Gallery, which is amazing. Uh, Ahmad is the founding partner of Car uh, Caravan, a VC investing in startups in Pakistan. He's also the founder of Project Code, which promotes digital literacy in the region. And as a talk show host, he hosts a popular podcast called The Ahmad Show, uh, where he interviews creative spirits and entrepreneurs from around the world. And this podcast was the number one trending podcast in the UAE in 2020, uh, along with the Karwan podcast and the Dastan Goi podcast sessions. Is that all accurate, Ahmad? <laughs> yes, um, but I don't live in the outskirts of Islamabad. I'm in Islamabad. That's the only thing that I would say. Okay, in Islamabad. Okay. Perfect. He lives in Islamabad, guys. Okay. <laughs> so, Ahmad, your uh, interests and experience are very varied from entrepreneurship and investment to art and the creative world. So, how did this come about? And were these your interests since you were a child? Um, or how did, how did this happen? I mean, you know, kind of haphazardly, Kabi like socha nahi tha ke iskandar jana hai or, you know, any of these kinds of things are going to happen. I think everything. Um, very organically happened. So like okay. my background was in fashion and e-commerce and going from there to starting off Caravan um, with my brother, who is my partner, my founding partner, um, okay. wanting to get involved in Pakistan. That's how we started mm -hmm. to look at Pakistan. Before that, we had never been, like I would Pakistan say, hey, like in the 70s, my parents mm. had moved, you know, to Dubai, which is where I was born, which okay. is where I spent the majority of my time. Um, no. So no. Pakistan started to come on my radar when Caravan was started, when we started looking at investing in the, in, in the country. Um, and the, the cool thing with investing is always that you work with so many different companies and so many different kinds of companies. So your interest, if you have a lot of interest, you can get more and more. Or exactly. you can just focus on one kind of company. Um, mm. With the art world, I happen to have a lot of friends who are creatives, which is why the podcast was started. The Amatra was the idea that, okay, you know, there's so many incredible people that I personally, personally knew in the Middle East that I got mm. to work with mm. because of the, the company that I was working in, um, okay. but they weren't being represented outside. So the goal of that was, how do you showcase this incredible talent that exists in the Middle East? The Amatra was mainly uh, focused on the Middle East to the rest of the world. So that's okay. how the macho kind of started. Um, and everything else, we've just been falling in, right? Like the Sangoi Jab Shuru Wata, that was because um, we were here. We got married in March mm -hmm. of last year. And mm -hmm. Rulia Yampe, you know, quote unquote, pas te, but it depends on like how you look at Pastana or how you perceive that. Yeah. Um, we yeah. love the six months that we were here. 
um, during the lockdown period in Islamabad. It got us closer. It got us to time, uh, spend time with our families. It got us to spend yeah. the most amount of time that I've ever spent in Pakistan, uh, period, which is why I'm here right. today. Um, wow. Had it not been the lockdown, I would not probably not have thought of it. Neither would have Wulia. Um, so naturally, I think in the game, you know, like instances of pain, which kind of get to where you are, and as long as you're interested, and, and, and as long as you're maybe that's not going, wouldn't have existed then, right? Yeah, I mean, it it completely is a, is a child of uh, the lockdowns and of COVID. Of the lockdown. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I'm going to ask you about Dasan going in more detail as well. <clears throat> okay, so I was uh, scrolling my phone the other day and I saw a quote that said that being an entrepreneur and being an artist are similar. You're creating something that doesn't exist and bringing it into the world. So do you agree with this? And also because this show or this Instagram live session is also aimed at sort of um, kind of teaching people about different careers, you know, if, if this is something that they'd like to get into. So how would you explain a career in the world of VC and entrepreneurship in simple terms to people who might be interested in it? I mean, venture capital kind of ranges, right? Like you can just be on the side of an analyst who looks at different companies and, um, um, and kind of tries to understand what works and what doesn't work in terms of like return on investment. Like it's very basic kind of, you know, way of looking at mm -hmm. business. How are you going to help mm. that company grow? Now, the company's intricacies okay. might be different, whether it be e-commerce, whether it be um, something that's B2B, whether it be something completely different. So it mm. makes you have to kind of learn um, on the go and, and you know, okay. be very agile in terms of being able to understand what companies work and uh, mm. how companies work. Okay, cool. Um... And can you tell us a little bit more about your life before you moved to Pakistan? And I know you mentioned this in the first question, but how events conspired to bring you where you are today? Uh, a little bit about life where you grew up, maybe, Europe. and et cetera. Where I grew up, I grew up in Dubai, um, born there, raised there, then nine years in Canada University, and then uh, moved back to Dubai. Um, in terms of life, I used to have a nine to five job. I was the head of digital for one of the biggest fashion houses they sell in Dubai. Um, I left them around five, six years ago, after which I started traveling. Okay. I was in France, Portugal, Spain, Morocco, spent a couple of years just traveling and consulting with different startups in Dubai, which is why um, now we're investing in them. And that's how I work with the startups. Um, okay. But I got very bored of, you know, the standard nine to five kind of life. Mm. And there was something that my brother told me that, you know, like, look at the way that you want to live your life and what you want out of it and try to structure work, life, love mm -hmm. around those things. Um, so that's what I strive to do. Have I successfully done it? I don't know. I don't think so. Like, and I try to do that um, okay. as much as possible. Very cool. But, uh, and uh, again, you mentioned that you're moving to Pakistan bit was just something that you hadn't planned. That just happened. Yeah. That just happened. You, and then you stuck and you guys stuck here. No, to we didn't stay here. Nay, 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 nay. So we got, um, so we were here during lockdown. I mean, so we got married in 2020, mm. March of 20, 21st March, 2020. 22nd mm. March was when the flights got canceled. Like there were no mm. flights out of, uh, out of Pakistan to go to Dubai. Subsequently, you know, complete lockdowns everywhere. We were not able to go home for six months. So we went home, mm. um, which at that point was Dubai in August of last year. And from okay. August until March, Mayor Wulia, like, actually, up to question, okay, do you want to move to Pakistan? Do you want to move to Lahore? Do you want to move to Islamabad? Like, are we going to do this? Okay. Are we going to move to Pakistan? So it's still, like, you know, like a constant kind of conversation that Mayor Wulia is going to ask. But we <coughs> packed our bags, packed our, packed our stuff, and yeah. officially moved to Pakistan in March of this year. Mm. Um, Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about your teachers, mentors, or um, any other people who helped you evolve, or maybe gave you some great advice in life? Um, a lot of people. I like. I don't know if it was just teachers. I think it's just people that you meet during you know life in general. There have been like some mm -hmm. coffee shop kind of conversations that have been around the world that have been extremely impactful to me. Um, there's something that my brother again says that is something that I keep with me and I tell people, which is like, how do you, um, how do you align your heart, your mind and your tongue? 
and that kind of centers a lot of decisions for you as long as you're able to keep those three in center um mm. i think that's something that like i will keep with me um yes jawab mia will keep okay. with me as 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 long as i um can remember it uh but mm. you know i i don't look at mentors as like khali ek professor or ek teacher i think everyone mm. has something to teach okay. you i think the last two right. weeks for example the all the artists that i got to like spend this lovely time with they taught me a lot um yeah. my wife teaches me every single day my parents my brothers my sisters like mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. so it's it's okay. it's as um flexible and as open as you want it to be in terms of mentors for me that that's amazing okay now coming to dastan goy um what is dastan goy and how did it begin um and also i just want to say it's amazing how because i didn't realize that it was a new uh, sort of account or something that was new it, it felt <coughs> like when i kind of saw it for the first time it felt like something that might have been around for a long time you know so many followers such amazing content and in just a year and a half it's got 21000 followers and it kind of started with a bang with sessions with people like misha shafi freya parvez shima karmani samat kusar etc um so why and how do you think it became so successful so quickly because sometimes it takes years to build this to be honest i don't know um i don't have an answer <laughs> for this i can tell you how it started it was a conversation between vilia and i actually it is probably because of vilia i mean the aesthetic that vilia has the ability of oh, yes. her to do the things that she does like it's not me it's it's her who's been able to kind of you know um create that's on going to what it is and the way that it is um in terms of people i think maybe they maybe it was because it was covid and it was you know everyone was locked down everyone was looking for some kind of event or some kind of culture or some kind mm-hmm. of way of coming together um maybe it was the design and and the way that yes fully it is true um she is saying that it's not that <laughs> It's both uh, of you. No her des- I have to give a shout out to her. Her design aesthetic is amazing. When I saw some of the earlier posters and vibes whatever they were, they were beautifully done and so professionally done. So I was sold. It, it really felt like ye pata nahi kitne time se ye cheez curate ki gayi hai, kaun chala raha hai. I didn't know, but uh, I, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. So both of you have done an amazing job. Yeah. I mean it's <laughs> it, I'm I'm telling you for a fact that it's Vilia. um um who's been able to do this and also constant support of the friends and family that have been around us i mm. think you know in a time like this where you've you know been stuck in a place uh, especially when you can't meet everyone i think mm. you know like i can give you names of friends who have you know been there with me throughout like my sure. kids and <laughs> like two absolutely um, you can give them chances these guys have you know always been there yeah. um supporting mm. and you know helping kind of you know wherever i don't know or like i can't understand how to kind of take it forward or really can like they've been there to support mm. but the idea for us has always been ke you know we we were here for 6 months in covid um mm. i remember specifically that table outside where like we went to dad and we like abu bas like koi company shuru karni hai kahaniyon ke liye and he came up with mm. the term of dastan goi um niya mm. hamesha se yahi thi ki how do we you know collectively learn about pakistan because we don't know anything because i mean i have spent all of my life outside i would come here for a week two weeks maybe and i was going to say that in itself is so interesting because when you look at that account you can not tell at all that you guys moved here 10 months ago and you if as you're saying you don't know much about it, it seems like it's people who've been deeply entrenched in pakistani culture for years and they know everything about it that's why they're able to run it so well so i find it's, that very interesting but you know the, the, the good thing is is that it's not us right it's not just me and mulia it's everyone like the way we go about it the way that we speak about mm-hmm. it is that it's a collective exploration it's not just us it's everyone's um, right. the events the way that we started the events as well was not to be stuck in nostalgia but look forward facing and try to understand that mm-hmm. pakistan aaj kya represent karta because a lot of times there's this um I don't know who it was that I was having this conversation with but they were talking about like especially expats and diaspora where they get stuck in uh, in nostalgia and they don't really mm. understand ki Pakistan aaj kya hai Pakistan ki intricacies aaj kya hai who what are the things right. that pe- that matter to people today um you know mm. and how do you kind of look mm. forward why do you always have to look mm. backward just to wo din jo the wo bahut acche din the but uh, that's not true right like today has some 
something great to give and some value to add as well. It's just about showcasing people that beauty and and building that communication and and building that bridge. Um, And for us, that is what it's been about is to very selfishly, I mean, I say it very blatantly, it it was a very selfish endeavor for us to start Das Langui to learn about our country, um, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but in a way that we want to. That in a way that would appear. Yeah, but in, in that selfishness, you're giving back a lot to a lot of people because I think through you guys, people are learning about Pakistan. Yeah. I mean, Thank we you. learned about Pakistan. We live here, but I think through that account, we are able to learn a lot more about it as well. So, I mean, I, listen, so we used to get so many messages. Why are you like talking about but What right is it to like, you know, um, what people right say that? to talk? Yeah, 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 we would get a lot of that. Me and Julia would both. But get people, a lot of that. okay. Now we moved to Just, Pakistan. So now you know. I now you. <laughs> well, they're the naysayers. You, you, you hear their thing from a. Look, I think a can't say something. Dusre can't say nikal de. Because there are plenty of maybe twenty times more people who are really happy with what you guys are doing. So how did the the concept of an art residency then come about? And can you tell us about how it came about and then also how it went? Okay, Um, how it came about was when we moved here in March. Um, My parents have a beautiful farmhouse that my brother has been, you know, managing and he's created this beautiful space over here um, Mm -hmm. that my brother and my sister live in. And, uh, you know, that's where we live as well. So it's my brother, myself, uh, my sister-in-law and Malia. Um, And we were like, you know, this is this beautiful space that we have. It's right in the heart of Islamabad. How can we use this to kind of create a community or bring people together? Because this is a place to be shared. Um, okay. And that's the, when the idea kind of started. Willie and I started discussing it, and we started discussing it with my brother as well, um, mm-hmm. and my dad. And they were like, you know what, go for it. If you can do it, do it. And uh, after that, I mean, I had happened to know a lot of people in the art world in, in the Middle East, not in Pakistan, because we had just mm-hmm. moved here. We did not know that many people. And <clears throat> people just came on board. Royal Cosme came on board. I got in touch with Pablo. Pablo loved it, loved the idea. He wanted to kind of join. Um, mm-hmm. So he came on board. Sunny is a dear friend. I've known her for years. Um, an amazing gallerist. She came on board. Um, Samit Kusat and Zara Shah Jahan, I had met through Das Nangri. So it was, you know, like a, like a, like eight the Fabus and everything just, yeah. exactly, everything just started falling Coming into place. Into place. Um, and then we put out the open call. Willie and I thought we would get a few applications. We got 170. We were blown away. First, we got 50, and we were like, "What is happening?" Yeah. Then, like, before we were closing up, we we're like 107, 170 applications, yeah. and we were but, like, "Yeah, okay, And um, by the way, that also it. shows. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. That also mm-hmm. shows that Pakistan made there's a dearth of such opportunities. Because there's a lot of opportunity, everybody applies. You know, when it comes to art prizes, when it comes to art residencies, there's such few of them that everybody wants to apply. So, but there's so again, many. it's a great thing. Mean, not that like, there's a lot, but like I learned so much from like, you know, um, Sabah. I spoke to her mm-hmm. about the Marie residency. I spoke to other people. Marie, yeah. What the, yeah. You know, what they've been doing, what worked, what didn't work. Like we did our research. We spoke to as many people as we could. Um, to understand, okay. okay, what are the things that go wrong? What are the things that go right? Mm-hmm. How can you create an experience? We knew that there was a particular kind of experience that we wanted to give. Um, we okay. didn't know if it was the right one, but we wanted to kind mm-hmm. of understand um, and test it out. You know, we never learn until you test stuff out. Um, yeah. So the open call happened. We got 170 applicants. We narrowed it down to 10. The, res- uh, the advisors chose five of them. Um, I was in Lahore up until the, the day the morning on when they uh, when wow. the artists were supposed to come. Wow. The night before mm-hmm. I came back, I found out that Shah Abdullah Almi, who was the fifth artist, had dengue. So he wasn't oh, able to come. So and then we yeah. got Mustafa Mohsen, who, again, you yeah. know, like when things work, things just like, they just, they, they just work. Uh, Mustafa exactly. happened to be coming back from, from Hamza. He came and he joined us on, on the Monday, on the following Monday. Um, in terms of the other part of your question, I think it was 
one of the most enriching experiences getting to know Maryam, Zara, Mubashar, Mustafa, Dinal over the course of the two weeks for myself and for Ulia. I think it was yeah. extremely emotional. I think it was um, extremely enriching the amount of stuff that I got to learn, the amount of stuff that I got mm. to experience with them. Um, yeah. see them grow yeah. in different uh, areas and see myself grow in different areas by learning through them. Um, so I'm going to be like, you know, I'm always, I think, going to be super grateful. And the first one is, you know, we, you always hope that you will remember uh, the first one. And I think like even the video, like I watch the video every single day. I've been watching that, like, you know, culminating video that showcases their journey every single yeah. day. And we yeah, like, it's yeah, in the yeah. fatigue, it's in the fatigue. I love it. Like, you know, just watching, you know, um, them come together was... That's amazing. And and uh, this was a, this was a two-week-long residency or did, was it longer? Yeah. So it was from the 22nd of March. Yeah. 22nd yeah. of March until the 5th of November. And to wow. be honest, we hadn't even anticipated <clears throat> or thought about doing a show. It was all planned within a week. Um, where they were like, okay, let's just do a show. And they were like, okay, how, where, what are we going to do? And like, yeah. before yeah. we set everything up. And Alhamdulillah, everything, you know, went super smoothly. It went really, really well. And that's what makes it fun as well. Because uh, in a way, gallery space is a lot. But this kind of a show where you're sort of deciding on in the moment that, you know, how are we going to exhibit? What tools do we have in this space that we're in? I think that's also exciting. It has its own charms. And also for the artists, I'm sure it was a brilliant experience because again, COVID was closed, no one was going outside. Then you had a beautiful place. Am I right in saying it's farmland? Because I think I keep messing that up. It's a, it's a farmland, right? What is it? It's, it is. It's a vineyard. It's an orchard. It's, it's a farm. It's a vineyard. Like in, yeah, it's, it's a farm. Okay. Like it's in the heart of Islamabad. It's like 10 minutes. It's in the heart of Islamabad. It's yeah. not in the outskirts. But no one will know but, where it is. That's the beauty of it. Okay. It's a hidden gem somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So basically... Uh, just the act of being in such a um, in in nature uh, for artists is a, is a great thing so i'm sure for them it was equally enriching as it may have been for you guys to have this time away from their usual practice and to be able to make something also kind of kind of without that pressure of um, you know wo hota hai jaise aap kaam bana rahe hote hain often as an artist you're like okay i'm making work now i need to sell it or this needs to be part of some exhibition or anything like that so that kind of pressure wasn't necessarily there in the residency and you guys no. gave them that space at that time and also the mentorship that they needed sort of a thing, right? Um, you guys had, I saw that you guys had talks with the, some artists yeah, as well. So, talks we had, and, um, so the way that we structured it was more experiential. And to be honest, like, it's, it's insane how people will surprise you. Like, I remember you were supposed to go to Taxila one day because we had, you know, the way that we had structured it, it was... Um, talks like mentor sessions it was also um like traveling within islam like going to dwar bazaar um we were supposed mm-hmm. to go to rawal pindi but then the ttp stuff was happening um so there, there was a little bit of exploration um mm-hmm. and then time over here in the farm to yourselves and then picnics or like you know like activities here and then mentor sessions with artists that we knew or that could help in some which way shape or form um and like i remember one day um we couldn't go to islamabad sorry we couldn't go to pindi so we thought that we'd go to taxila and said everyone was excited about going okay. to taxila and yeah. the first person mustafa's like no i need to work there's a lot of light i need to you know i need to work and then i come oh, in you know it's like 1:30 and like dher baj gaya like taxila jana hai ghanta dur hai you know what's what's going on and zaira yeah. sitting there maryam sitting there and they like i don't know you know we want to do an exhibition like in a day let's just not go oh. let's just you know, let's just work <laughs> so this was the kind right. of thing like they were themselves That's just true. like so motivated about doing this yeah. I, was blown away. i was like i was so excited like i'm like really, <laughs> I'm, like jacket on gaadi ki jaagi bhi pakad li hai like you know like yeah. we're going to go to taxila yeah. finally i'm going to get to show with you at this place as well <laughs> um No, they're like, no, we want to... But it's great that you kept it open as well, that uh, artists have the mood that you keep it in your mind, not just uh, regimented things, you just have to decide what you want to do. So that's a good thing as well. So I'm sure yeah, they were. I, I was following the updates, yeah. They looked like they were really into everything, of course. Yeah, I mean, you have to like sit down and ask each of them, right? I think they will be able to yeah. give you a better experience and a better, like a proper uh, understanding of how no, it was no. for them. Um, okay. I just know that it was for me, like how it was for me and, and for me, it yeah. was an unforgettable experience. But to be honest, like it's, 
insane. I was having this conversation like more on the tech side, but um, we were talking about like, you know, how do you motivate people and, and like, how do you get people to start looking forward? Um, and to mm. be honest, like as long as you give them space and you give them like an encouraging environment, I think people will surprise you. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Um, can you tell us about the upcoming Dastan Gui Gallery? So this, again, came about through conversations of uh, over the two, like, you don't understand, me and Wilia always say, we don't know what we're doing. Um, we go with the flow. We're very fluid in that's, that way, right? That's it, so cool. It's, yeah. Dastango is an experiment. We we'll keep seeing, we'll keep doing whatever we can do and see wherever um, it makes sense. So we were initially not going to do an exhibition. The artists were like, let's do an exhibition. We were okay. not going to sell any artwork. Um, the artists mm. are like, let's sell the artwork. And there are people asking for a catalog. Um, we are still working on the catalog, but we will be sharing that. So if we're sharing a catalog, it, I mean, and the experience that we've had, we would love to kind of translate that into a gallery. I mean, just the right. fact that there's so many incredible artists um, in this country um, yeah. and still only a handful of galleries, I think maybe True. we can, you know, True. help in some which way, shape or form. Do I know exactly what that looks like? I don't. How is it going to okay. translate? I mean, these are conversations that we're having currently, uh, internally. Um, but throughout, you know, it's just been the incredible support from the artists, from the community, from critics, from curators that have, you know, been there um, to help us. Um, guide us. Like I was on a... So, sorry, I, I was going to ask, have you decided, the, do you know the location of it? That much you, that you must know. Yeah. It'll be in Islamabad. <laughs> um, it'll be online in okay. Islamabad. Um, huh. Where? Maybe. I don't know if I'm ready to share that yet, but uh, yes. Okay. Take care. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so now that you've told me how Dasna and Gui came about, which is kind of every, going with the flow, getting to know people, getting to know, and then through them, getting to know other people, back and forth exchange. Um, so how important, this is, we already know the answer, but I'd like you to answer it anyway. How important is networking in a professional's life? Um, any tips on being a good networker? And have your networking skills helped cultivate your work in various areas? So not just here, but maybe the other hats that you wear in all of these, how important is networking? I don't like the word networking. Like, okay. I've just always been very averse. And like, I'll give you any, like, so initially, I remember when I was very young, um, I would, I picked up smoking because I would go to these events because I wanted to meet people. You know, like, oh, like, and I would get nervous and I'd go outside and I'd start smoking. I don't, like, okay. because it was the niyat ghalati. Because I was huh. going there for, like, you know, like, just taking and not giving back or, like, you know, like, with no kind of idea of why I was there. Um, I think meeting people is very important, but meeting them with the right niyat. Um, people will like, they will yeah, gravitate, cool. you know, towards you. Um, Sabah just joined, yeah. like, I, I like, I love her to bits. Like the amount of, you know, guidance and help that she's given us, um, you know, with the mentor session, everyone loved her and the amount of guidance that she gave me even before we had started the residency, you know? So wow. like, I think it really, helps guide you to the right people um, Bilkul. Bilkul. for the right reasons. And they can see that. But as soon as you, like, you're a little bit iffy, All of that. I think people can people see that as well. It shouldn't be contrived, basically. So it, yeah. it shouldn't be something contrived. When these things happen naturally, that's, that's when it, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, but, but again, people are also so open, right? Like what I've yeah. noticed over the last year um the people that i've been able to meet because of that language has been incredible um some of the most incredible artists some of the most incredible human beings i made some incredible friends over the course of this mm. time period because like again me and Wilia knew no one in pakistan because we had never lived in right. pakistan when we pakistan move like oh wapas a gaye like baat hai nahi because we've never lived here i did not grow up here Pakistan is a country wow. where people go to school together and like they have the same mm. friendships. I don't have that. Neither does Wulia. Mm. Uh, maybe Wulia does in Karachi, but not, you know, not over here. 
Um, okay. So it's it's very much new for us to see and meet people, and the way that people have been has been absolutely incredible. That's amazing. Okay, so this is a question where you will have to appreciate yourself a little bit, but um, just for other people to learn, what qualities do you think you have that make you successful? I success is a very relative term. Willia will hate me for this, but I am very critical of myself. I've always been that way. So I still don't okay. see myself as successful. Um, mm -hmm. And like, so, like, for instance, I always also still end up, like if I end something, I say that I'm still a work in progress, which is very true because I think we all always are works in progress. I don't think there's yeah. end goal of the media. Sorry. Um, so I don't know how the connection uh, from my side. Sorry, yeah, because the connection was lost for a bit. Um, okay, so let's rephrase this. Which qualities do you think are important for people to be to be? I don't know if people can hear, but Aman's video is breaking up a little bit. Can you guys hear the, me? Or is it all stuck? I'm a bit confused right now. If you guys can see me and uh, Ahmad, can you please just type here? Because I don't know if you guys can see this video or not. Okay. Something was wrong. Okay, so you guys can see me. I'm going to try to add Ahmad back to this. <laughs> Hi, everyone who's joined. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just going to try to add Ahmad again. Invite. Okay, yeah. So maybe there's something up with the connection there. Hi, Ahmad. We lost you for a bit. Hello. No worries. Hi. Um, can you see me and hear me properly? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, so I was just saying, let's rephrase the question. Which qualities do you think are important for people to sort of mm, move to the next step in life or just important qualities for success? Be curious. Sorry? Be curious. And be, be curious to learning. That, that's, a, that's a good point. Right. That makes sense. Um, okay. Some significant uh, experiences or achievement you'd like to talk about that you're proud of. I mean, I think I'm very proud of the last two weeks. Um, that's the most recent. I think Julia yeah. I, and I both would say that. Like we're both very, very proud of the way the residency yeah. went. Of course. Rightly so. Okay, so now can you tell us about a day in your life? Like a quick run through an average day. What do you, when do you wake up, when you sleep, what do you do during the day? Um, um, how does it work? <laughs> so I usually wake up quite early. Like normally I wake up at like around 7, 8, wake up, have coffee, work. I mm -hmm. love mornings. That's when I get most of my work done. You're a morning person. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's Mariam saying in the morning as well because you would see them in the morning. Um, and then mm -hmm. I go for a walk. I work outside. Oh. The weather is nice. I like sitting outside and working. I'm on my laptop or on my phone, um, literally always to a detriment. Like in by I think seven, eight o'clock, I'm usually in the room, either working or with Ilya and we we'll watch something or something like that. But we try to take walks. We work together. So I see Ilya 24 seven. Um, we're together 24 seven. Awesome. Um, yeah. Other than the caravan yeah. stuff, which I do separately, and, and with us, I'm going to always, um, it's always together. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never so, leave um, the home. Okay. My office is But is it ever a challenge to work? Um, sorry, I missed that part. I, I was, was just, just asking that. My that... office is like right here. But sorry, go on. Yeah, that's really cool. But is it ever a challenge to work from home? In the sense that a lot of artists, for example, because you're working from your studio, sometimes they feel like we don't have that sort of routine or we don't feel motivated. Do you ever feel that or are you always on your toes and you don't lack any motivation ever? No, no I mean, I, I love it. I love the fact, I mean, it, it comes back to the point that I made earlier, right? Like, how do you want to spend your life um, yeah. and how do you want to kind of go forward? For me, mm. it has been that I want to work from home for a very, very long time. It's just how do I create that sustainability that allows me to do that? Because like I remember, you know, when we were growing up, my dad would be working all the time and I would always miss him. This is something that I discussed mm. with my brother as well. 
And so, inshallah, inshallah, one day, whenever we have kids, I would love to be with them always. Right. Um, right. So I can, I mean, maybe not to the point where like they're like, you know, get out of my face. Like, and <laughs> to be able to be there whenever, you know, whenever they need. Right. Um, so that's I would a, always like, point. I mean, the whole idea of remote work is very sexy now. Like, and, um, I would, I would always go for that. Like, I would like I mean, separate it, create a, create a room for yourself, mm-hmm. create a uh, different place for mm-hmm. yourself. But mm-hmm. I love the idea of working from home. I love the idea that I'm always with mm-hmm. Bulia or next year. And kind of also being your own boss, right? <laughs> that yeah. that's also got a lot of merit, that you know. Has. Not having yeah. to sort of report to someone in that sense. Or I mean, either is good. Some people really like that because it offers them a routine. It offers them like focus. But maybe it's a personality still, thing as well. Uh, Shanze, you you <laughs> report to someone no matter what you do. Um, yeah, to you report yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you exactly. Yeah, so you're doing it for you. Like you're doing it for you, so you're buying something from you. Like you're still ah, buying. Of course. Like Bilkul. I'll be Bilkul. on my phone sometimes. Like when we're doing launches, we're doing product launches, and we do candles every once in a while, mm-hmm. or like yeah. new products. Um, I am on my phone at like three o'clock in the morning replying to people, right? And I'm doing that myself. We are not doing it. Like I remember I was talking to someone the other day, and the guys like. Mm-hmm. um who's your pr team like let me reach out you know tell my people to talk to your people i guess okay. like put me in touch i'm like dude i'm my people he's like what do you I'm mean i'm the pr team like, i'm i'm the pr team i'm like what's it what do you mean yeah see that's the thing um and i think that this is uh, again from people who aren't really from creative fields maybe this is something that they don't realize or understand i'm not talking about everyone but some people that when you are doing something on your own there's also that added pressure of learning yourself because no one's there to teach you so again being curious is important because aap khud hi aapko seekhna padta hai and then you have to like I, i can't find a better term but you have to keep yourself relevant on your own again not in the sense that oh we have you know having the um, any ulterior motives but just the fact that that's extra mehnat that you have to do yourself you have to figure out your own way you have to be persistent um and you aren't without because in other fields you often have um like i've said this before aapke kuch koi na koi goals hote hain ki acha mujhe pehle you know um manager banna hai phir wo kuch aur banna hai phir kuch aur banna hai but in in other fields aapke paas wo kuch wo sab hai nahi wo parameters hai nahi so aapki jo success hai that also is something that it's it's confusing you don't know if you're successful or not but you have to keep going sort of a thing right i mean for example you you have dastan goi which is massively popular and doing so well but abhi bhi aap ye keh rahe hain ki nahi hame hame we're going with the flow we're har roz hum dekh rahe hain kya ho raha hai kya karna hai and all that stuff but usme bhi it while you're going with the flow there is some that's there's added pressure because you don't know whether you're there yet or not right so uske apne bhi challenges hote hain i think उसके अपने चैलेंजेस होते हैं एंड व्हाट इज देयर देयर इज डिफरेंट फॉर एवरीवन दैट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन देयर इज डिफरेंट फॉर एवरीवन दैट्स इट राइट सो एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर एंजॉयिंग इट टुडे या दैट्स ट्रू दैट्स ट्रू एंड आई थिंक आई थिंक दैट्स अ गुड पॉइंट व्हाट इज देयर बट इफ यू कुड चूज एन अल्टरनेट करियर वुड यू और डू यू हैव एनीथिंग इन माइंड व्हाट वुड इट बी I mean, I'm pretty happy. Um, I, I like already want to do so many other things in my current career. So, like, yeah, I, I think, you know, like the fact that I get to do the stuff that I do with Caravan, the the fact that I get to do the stuff that I do with Dastanvi, and Dastanvi is a very broad platform yeah. that allows me to, you know, like experiment and test out things. Caravan again, you know, the nine companies mm-hmm. that we've invested in, looking at what they're doing, yeah, seeing how we can yeah. add value and. and even the consulting stuff that i do very occasionally um allows me to be you know as like i have a tendency of like add i have a lot of it like woni hota ke like har dafa kuch na kuch naya chahiye hota hai like some kind of um mm. dopamine hit um mm. i always crave okay. that maybe i would want to start another brand um okay. i think me and lydia have been talking about that for some time but no very i think cool. i'm i'm pretty yeah. happy i just want to you know um create more things as much as i can amazing that's great um social media it's uh something that come into our lives in the last 10 years or even even less in in a way how has that aided you in your career 
It's helped tremendously. I mean, there's obviously bad uh, things about it as well, but I think it's helped me quite a bit in terms of meeting new people. Like, I, even to this day, um, like, there's people that I've never met in person that have been tremendously helpful um, online, you know, and because of meeting them or reaching out to them, it's just another form of LinkedIn or, you know, getting in touch with people and seeing if they connect with you. I had a call with this lovely, lovely um, curator today um, because I needed help with like thinking around the gallery. And, you know, he, mm. like, I reached out to him on Instagram and he's like, okay, let's have a call. And I had a lovely half an hour conversation with him and got to learn a lot Amazing. from him. And, and, you know, very, yeah. very grateful for the time that he spent um, yeah. with me because yeah. I called him. I like random stuff. And now he's you know, going to Instagram and message here. Um, mm. But the fact that he was, you know, willing to give his time, I think I'm super grateful. So in that regard, um, like any other tool, as long as it's used, you know, to the right kind of right. niyat. Everything comes down to niyat. Niyat kya hai apke? Niyat, niyat kya hai? And daastan koi to hai hi social media pe. Matlab, that's where, that's I mean, how people get got to know about it. Yeah, that's how we you know? started. So, so that we... outreach, that's how you started, right? Um, so, which of these roles comes to you most easily or... Uh, which of these do you enjoy the most? Is it your you being an entrepreneur, being an investor, podcast host, founder? And and you can also talk about your podcast a little bit because we'd love to know about the Dasnan Gui podcast. And then there are two more, right? The Ahmad Show and then yeah, so Caravan. I just love starting new podcasts and not understanding <laughs> the it takes a lot of time to keep on continuing them. Um, <clears throat> you have three, basically. Yeah. Three. Are you ru- are you running all of them right now? I am, but I'm not going to lie. It's been some time since I've, I've recorded the Dastangoy one recently. I haven't published. Mm. Caravan mm. is on my mind. I haven't published in like maybe a couple of months. Same thing with the Amacho. I have one, I think, pending. I'm going to publish I mm-hmm. overcommit to what I can do physically. Okay. Um, okay. I love doing the podcast because it allows me to speak to people. And that's how I get my energy. And that's how I get yeah. my thoughts straight. And mm. I get to learn. Um, so for me, that's always been something that I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I think mm-hmm. I'm going to continue to do that. Um, okay. The Ahmad show okay. was very much to kind of, you know, <clears throat> highlight the cradles of the Middle East. Caravan podcast was very much to feed back into what Caravan's in, initial, like not initial, but right. like the niyat was, is like mm-hmm. a lot of talent, mm-hmm. people a lack of resources to support them. So Caravan's podcast, which is our investment vehicle, um, podcast is all about how do you showcase to the younger generation of Pakistan okay you don't necessarily need to go outside of Pakistan to be able to see the extremely amazing successful stories within Pakistan the lessons that if you can uh-huh. learn from the entrepreneurs because you know the unfortunate truth of our country is okay, a lot of people do not have the uh, ability to go outside does that make them any less no hmm. um, does that mean that there aren't opportunities in Pakistan no it's just another case, you know, of how do you kind of counteract that. So for, for the, in it, the intent for the Caravans podcast is to showcase that you Facebook, Google, Amazon, and you don't have to go to the like lot of high zealotist um, companies and entrepreneurs are here. Oh you can reach out to and you can start your own thing. Um, the Sandwich oh podcast was, again, to, you know, learn more about Pakistan. So um about the stories of people over here so it's 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 honestly been um just another channel for me to kind of you know take in more information and be able to process yeah. and see what we do and you also told me that uh um i believe it was the amar show that was the number one trending in the uae right that's so, so I, cool actually i was very lucky um that's when we amazing the amar show there were seven episodes of out of 10, out of the top 10 that were all the Ahmad show in all of the Middle East. It wasn't just in the US. That is the crazy. And all then, of the Middle East. All of the Middle East. And then when we launched the Caravan podcast, it was the top trending business podcast for uh, on Apple in Pakistan. And Dastanvi was the top wow. trending uh, art podcast in Pakistan on Apple. That's amazing. That means you need to continue and you need to bring the, the other two back as well whenever you get to It's consistency. It's, it, it comes down to consistency yeah. though. Like, you know, you need to keep on churning stuff out. And that's just, but it's understandable yeah. because you guys are doing a lot and you're coming up with new ventures. So we're natural. Like, you could momentarily and then you can always go back. 
that's a good thing yeah. about these things. There's no set. There, yeah, it's okay if you've taken a break, right? Okay. Um, so, do you think that, um, from your understanding, do you think that fine art, whether <clears throat> um, it's exposure, it's creation, understanding, it's promotion and collection, is primary, uh, primarily an exclusive thing, or do you think art is easily accessible for all? I mean, it, I'm still trying to understand. Um, I don't think I have the concrete answer for this, but mu museums have fine art and they're accessible to all. I think art and every form of you know, education, um, every form of something that needs to be you know, taken in, that has the ability to change, to create stories, to create dialogue, I think should be accessible to all. Um, right. Of course, you know, at the end of the day, artists need to make money then that means that how do you have that arbitrage of who has the capital to be able to invest and to be able to purchase so that, you know, the cycle is, um, I don't know if you free me though. like, no, that's, that's just not how it works. But I do think that, you know, museums serve a purpose. And I think that purpose is very important and I think that continues mm. to be. Um, I think yeah. collections also um, continue to serve a purpose and they will also continue to be. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a massive need for public art. I think that the beautification of a place showcases exactly. the importance of a place and that creates a different kind of narrative, a different kind of conversation that I think um, can go a very, very long way in terms of creating um, self-importance and, and creating motivation. Yeah. Like I look at the example that a friend of mine did, uh, the Wynwood Walls, and how, you know, Wynwood was like a rundown area and now because of what he created with the Wynwood Walls and the murals that he created over there, I think it's one of the most visited um, areas wow. in Miami. It's, it's actually incredible. Wow, that's amazing. And then that's amazing. I look at, yeah, and, and it, that has the ability to create dialogues and, and you know, create conversations. El Cid, another beautiful human being, dear friend of mine, um, and the work that he does, like his work is exhibited, it's for the people, and the way that it's exhibited creates conversation and brings people together. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's all about- Look at how started. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vandalism, which is now, I mean, you know, people go yeah. to see it. And also, of course, it's worth so much more now. But I, I think that in Pakistan, um, perhaps we need more museums because um, maybe we don't have enough to see if, uh, the general public doesn't have enough art to see. And uh, this is this is a conversation I have with friends of mine who aren't from the art world. And we don't know how to look at art, we don't know how to appreciate it and all of that. Whereas I think the, the, the museums and galleries there, perhaps they are more accessible or maybe just the existence of museums just helps because people know they can go in, you can learn about things and all that. Either shayad kam hai. Is there a gap Okay. I would counter that. I would say okay, that's not true. For me, at least. I think Lahore Museum okay. is beautiful. I think Taxila Museum is beautiful. The artifacts mm. that are there are absolutely incredible. I think maybe contemporary art museums we do not have. I think yeah. that, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in terms of um, museums, period. Like, but, but again, it mm -hmm. comes back to nostalgic museums. So, like, our Kapurani history or our civilizations and like all of the religious artifacts and all of that stuff. Um, I think yeah. Taxila is beautiful. I've only been to Taxila, I've been to Mahatma Palace, I've been to the Har Museum, I've been to, I think, Takh Bhai Mevi Ekta. But there are a few museums. It's not like there aren't museums. There are a few. Museum. Yes, I agree. There are a few. So, I, I just think, think all of Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're right here. Hmm. Cultural initiatives, I think, should always be there. I think contemporary should also be, um, there should be a museum for contemporary art. I think hmm. that is hmm. very, very necessary because it tells the story of today. Um, yeah. You know, an ongoing story as well, which is an evolving story of Pakistan. Um, so I think that also needs to be taken into consideration. I think that the PNCA has a gallery, which I'm still dying to go to, and I still haven't been yeah. in Islamabad. Yeah. I just saw the Shakir Ali Museum in Lahore a couple of weeks ago in a beautiful space and a beautiful museum. Amazing. So there is a lot of stuff. Um, it's just the There's a space in Karachi that's opened up and I'm really excited to go. I think it's called the TDF Magnificent Science Museum or something. And it is mainly for kids, but it would be amazing to visit because as kids, we did really learn about sci science in an interactive way. It was purely textbooks in Pakistan, for example. 
but now there's a place where you can go, you can learn, you can interact with things, and it just seems so exciting. And I'm, I'm like my friends were all like, we should be going and learning over there to make up for from what we didn't learn in our childhood. So I'm glad that these places are opening up now, and yeah, chiji the and yeah, honey chai. So and I think I would love to visit uh, a number of museum, you know, that you're talking about in Lahore, Daxila. Kuch visit kiye hain zada nahi, but uh, I'm glad that they do exist. But hopefully in the future. There'll be more. And Maybe yeah, that's time where you can have a museum in the future. I would love that. Listen, <laughs> that would be so cool. Unlimited, unlimited resources. Yeah, like hundred yeah. percent, I'd do that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, okay, so is there any upcoming project you'd like to mention that people can watch out for? I think the next big one for us is going to be the gallery. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, now. Uh, I have a rapid fire round, which is not a very original round, <laughs> but it's just for fun. So you can just give quick, short answers, okay? Can I uh, and you feel free to because that, huh? that I might do. I might, I might also not answer some of them. But go on. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can skip. You can just say skip if you want to skip one of them, okay? Um, favorite actress, actor, and movie? Um, actress and actor. I mean, I, there was a point in time where I loved Russell Crowe in. Uh, What do you call it? Uh, Gladiator, Finding Neverland. Oh, I really love that film. Audrey Tautau on um, in Amelie Poulain. I love that also. Okay, awesome. Um, if you were if you were on a desert island, name one person and two things you would like to take with you. I take Vilia, um, and I would take my phone, and I would take my laptop. Okay. <laughs> Most people answer. Yeah, that's that's smart. Um, and internet probably with the laptop. Uh, one, person, yeah. <laughs> one person, one uh, person, dead or alive, you'd like to take for dinner? Steve Jobs. Ooh. I'm like a huge Apple fan. Like huge, huge really. Apple fan. My first job was okay. at an Apple store. Like I'm a huge. Apple oh, fan. that is so cool. Okay. Um, one funny or embarrassing situation you'd like to share? I'd skip that. <laughs> I was really looking forward. To, I always look forward. To <laughs> um, what time of the day are you most creative and productive? Morning. 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 Um, is there any advice you'd like to give your younger self? Trust yourself a little bit more. Give yourself more credit, right. maybe. Oh, like, trust okay. yourself a little bit more. Trust yourself a little bit more. Um, what scares you? <clears throat> Being scared to be too crippled to do what I want to do. Mm. Okay, interesting. Um, an exciting moment in your life? Uh, getting married, moving here. Um, so many. Awesome. Um, the most special thing about Pakistan? Uh, the people, the places. Um, It's been incredible, man. Like I, I can't just give you yeah. one. I think since March, it's been like a roller coaster. Since we, I mean, it's it's it blows my mind to think that seven months ago we had not moved to Pakistan. We moved here literally seven months ago. Can um, I insert a quick question here? Like, even though it's not yeah. part of this, did you have a certain impression of the country which perhaps changed, or was it basically, or did you just not have any so impression? For, yeah. I mean, when I moved here in, I mean, this year. Or like when I started building. As in, just generally, I think when you when you came here and then you decided to stay on, कभी कभी होता है stereotypes होती हैं country की या फिर सुने ही होती हैं चीजें. Yeah, hundred percent of it. Yeah. I mean, uh, my impression of Pakistan started to change because of a friend of mine who brought me here as the token Pakistani guy he knew. And it was the first time I got to. I mean, he was the head of Facebook Middle East in Pakistan, and he's this German okay. Venezuelan guy, like lovely guy. Okay. I love him to bits, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "Deco Pakistan me, like you know, we're starting to um, do activities, and we want to go there. We have some meetings." And he's like, "You're Pakistani, you know, come, let's go, and let's you know uh, explore." So I was like, "Cool, let's go." I was like, mm -hmm. "I'm like, I don't know anything about Pakistan, but sure." Um, mm -hmm. And it was the first time I got to experience. I mean, I've traveled the world, but I'd never experienced Pakistan as a as a tourist. And <clears throat> I think it was the first time where I got to travel around and be a tourist in Pakistan. 
and that just like completely blew me away because i thought that when i was a child i would like you always go like ha iski daawat hai uski daawat hai and then you never really get to experience or like and i'm yeah, like you know what like any gana wahan pe kele nikana so that was all of a sudden mm-hmm. like oh i can go to hotels and i can go to wherever the hell i want to um, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. opened my mind and you know you meet new people you make new friends and that's I think that was the like if you were to mark where my relationship with Pakistan changed I think mm-hmm. it was that one trip with Jonathan um, okay. that okay. really did. amazing um one dream of yours um pass pa- pass <laughs> what makes you truly happy a lot of things my wife makes me very happy my family makes me very happy my friends make me very happy doing what i'm doing makes me very happy um yeah. it's happiness what i'm starting to understand more and more as i get older is a feeling that is a fleeting feeling you will be sad you will be happy you will be emotional all in one day mm. to realize mm-hmm. that everything comes and goes that makes sense a lot of people focus on happiness all the time not just a lot of people yeah. i think this is a narrative yeah, that's like be happy yeah, all the time but i think that's it's not humanly possible it's it's not humanly it's not possible i think you have to embrace yeah. all emotions at different times awesome so with this we are at the end of our question and answer session um if you guys i should have sent this earlier actually if anybody has any questions they can quickly put them in um so maybe let's wait for like 30 seconds or something mm-hmm. and i'm just going to go through the comments meanwhile um all right I think a number of your friends joined and they were saying hi to you. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> All right. But Amal, I'm going to be putting this up as an IGTV and I'm also going to be putting this up on YouTube even though I don't have any followers on YouTube but just just as a record for people who aren't on Instagram. So I'm going to be doing that. Um and I suppose if people have questions they can send them inbox them to me and I'll forward them to Ahmad and then respond I'm we can respond to you very easily right? reachable if you yeah. message the same way or if you message my personal instagram account it will either be me at 3 o'clock in the morning when I cannot sleep replying <laughs> to you or it will be um the next morning it will be yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, that it will come to me and please follow the same way for updates and there's also another instagram for the gallery right so they yes. can follow that Yeah. yeah. And also follow the podcast. Yeah. Yes. If <laughs> you go from watching your podcast, you see all of the all of the accounts that Yeah. I, I, all of the things that man. Awesome. Amar, thank you so much for coming on board. It was a pleasure speaking with you and just getting to know your journey. And um shout out to Velia as well for all the cool th- cool things she does. <laughs> and um yes. So take good care. I will watch out for all of the cool updates that come from Dasan Goy and um uh, bye-bye. we'll be uploading Thank the you. session now <laughs> Thank you for doing this Thank you to everyone that came I uh, Shanzi dude I really appreciate you doing this man I, I'm glad that you're doing this So Oh I, I want to give you a shout out too because I remember we had a conversation and uh, during that I was just considering doing something like this like starting a podcast or uh, something like this and I remember you were like ha kar lo koi bhi help chahiye or any So it got solidified I was like you know what why wait let's just start it And I think this was the most the easiest thing to start and I'm really enjoying it So thank you for that <laughs> it's the best thing um it's the best know, thing i realized i love talking to people yeah yeah, yeah just do <laughs> it and you never know where it kind of takes you just doing exactly. is the issue like the jo initial friction hoti hai na ki nahi karna nahi hai pata nahi kaise jayega just do it what's the worth of connection bilkul 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 no it no it's great so i'm, I'm really enjoying it so thank you omar take good yeah. care and hopefully we will thank all meet you. soon in person sometime <laughs> islamabad yeah. is your home whenever yeah. you come yeah. you are more than welcome <laughs> Um, inshallah inshallah bye ma take care bye 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 bye